Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now what I've got in front of me here is an Imperial Fist, who are out and away one of my favourite of the Space Marine chapters. And Yellow has for a long time had a reputation for being a little bit tricky to paint, but it doesn't have to be that way at all. What I'm going to use today is mostly contrast, and if that surprises you, well, stick around because I'm going to show you just how to get this result. All of the paints will be listed in the description below along with the recipe for the base, so let's get started. So once your Space Marine is all cleaned up and assembled, it's time to prime him. And using a colour like Imperial Fist, I reckon the easiest choice to go for here for the primer is going to be Wraithbone. Now you could use something like Brain Matter Beige from the Army Painter, which is ever so slightly lighter, uh, but it is still an off-white with a little bit of warmth to it, which is going to work perfectly for what we've got in mind. Now all the same, rather than just bucketing it over and spraying it three or four times, uh, it's going to be safer to be a little bit more sparing with your primer spray. And what I've got now is some wraith bone from the pot, just a little bit of water in it, and I'm going to go over areas where the uh, primer has not covered perfectly. But you'll see it's still covered enough to give us a surface that we can paint quite safely on. So. Just going ahead, a nice flat brush is easiest for this, and cover over all of the bits that are going to be yellow. Now give that plenty of time to dry, and then we're going to apply the Imperial Fist to our Imperial Fist, which I will never get sick of making that stupid joke. Anyhow, once you've given this a really good shake, like make sure it is mixed up. The first thing you're going to spot that's different from the other contrast colors is that a few of the new ones they are a very strong pigment, but they don't really do the shading thing that the sort of first generation contrast did. So we've got a wonderful warm yellow here, uh, but we don't have that funky uh, orangey sort of tint in the recesses. All the same, what I'm going to do is go ahead and cover over all of the armor with Imperial Fist. So take your time with this because you do want to make sure that you're not missing any bits in the recesses. And while it might be tempting to just bucket it wholesale over the entire miniature, eh, take your time, be a little bit more cautious with it, and you'll get a better result. Now, once you've gone around the whole miniature, you'll have something that looks like this. Now, the cool thing with this one is that Imperial Fist doesn't tend to streak uh, on Space Marine armor like some of the other contrast colors can, so it's actually really easy to apply. What I've got is we're going back to Wraithbone, and I've got a little soft dry brush here. What I'm going to do is fairly carefully start dry brushing towards the edge of any areas of detail. I just want to pick out nice quick edges. Now, this is a great deal faster than painstakingly highlighting all of these armor panels. And if you do end up getting a slightly chalky finish in some areas, well, not to worry, because I'll show you something really interesting <laughs> about Imperial Fist in a second. Now after a few passes, I've got a white-ish highlight, which is going to work quite nicely once we shade this whole thing. It's going to look a little bit chalky now in some places, but like I mentioned, there is something you can do if you don't like that. Just go straight back to your Imperial Fist, and I'm actually going to leave quite a bit of this chalkiness because it's going to work fairly well as a uh, sort of a transition of two colors. But Imperial Fist, putting it over Imperial Fist, it actually doesn't dull down the color all that much. So for the sort of scale that we're working at, you can use it over that dry brush to tidy it up. So any big splotches that you don't want, just a wee bit of Imperial Fist again, and you'll have a nice tidy marine. I'm going to swap down to, well, it's about the size of a medium layer brush, this. This is actually the base coating hobby brush from the Army Painter. I really like it for applying contrast in smaller areas. What I'm going to do, this would probably be much easier without the camera in the way, I'm going to apply some Baal Red straight to the chest eagle. Now this is not the color that it's going to finish up, because of course we're going to shade it. So take your time here, and uh, if you make any mistakes, try and angle your brush so that it's pointing out away towards the bolter. That way, any mistakes, you're probably going to hit an area that you haven't painted yet. But as you've seen, if you do make a mistake, you hit the yellow, well, all you need to do, grab your wraith bone, grab your imperial fist, 
you can tidy it up very easily. And once that's done, we can start applying, well, pretty much the predominant color everywhere else, which is going to be with Black Legion. So let's apply this to the undersuit, uh, to his webbing, well, webbing his equipment pouches, uh, and as well, I'm also going to use this to base coat the bolter. Areas that are going to be metallic later on, I can just go straight over the top with this. Now, it's always kind of astonishing how much of a difference that step makes. Uh, it will take a bit of time, and in particular, slow down as you get to the uh, sigil here on a shoulder pad. Uh, but remember, as always, that you can use a little bit of wraith bone and that imperial fist to tidy up. What I've got now is lead belcher. Now, ordinarily, I tend to use iron hand steel for my metal bits, but on a miniature like this, where the armor is so bright, I like instead to have a slightly darker, more sort of sinister looking metal color. So I'm going to base coat all of the bits of the bolter and these little dealy boppers on his pack as well. And then with a little bit of retributor armor, I'm going to base coat any gold details. Now, which bits of these are on your miniature is of course going to depend on how you've assembled him. I haven't put much in the way of ornamentation on this fella, uh, but if you've got any of those little key cases or what have you, go ahead and knock them on with a bit of this now. Now for this little scroll doofer on his bolter, I'm going to use Skeleton Horde, and I'd recommend the same for any purity seals. Uh, speaking of purity seals, while this guy doesn't have any on him, um, I'd look at something like Volupus Pink maybe for the wax on those, but a green can also work really well. It is up to you. Now this here is a little mix of what I've always called marine juice. It is an old recipe from the Forge World Army painting team. What it is, is equal parts Lamy and Medium, Reichland Flesh Shade, and now I'm using the Army Painter's Dark Tone. Because it used to be non-oil, but they changed the formulation, and it's just not as dark. What this is going to give us is a reddish brown. It's not as dark and brown as Agrax Earthshade, and it's got a little bit more oomph to it than something like Seraphim Sepia would. It's a really good universal armor shade. So what I'm going to do is start bucketing this over the entire miniature. Take care to try and apply it to one area at a time, get it into all the recesses. And uh, some folks ask me sometimes, how do you get it so smooth? Well, simple answer is, once you've applied this, instead of just chucking it on and uh, not doing anything to it, once it's applied, let it settle for a couple of seconds, and then you can start shifting it around to where it looks like it's going to be needed. So I've got way too much on that shoulder pad. I'll just lift it off and apply it to some other areas. Now, Once I've applied all of this, we'll pop it in the sun somewhere and let it dry for about half an hour. Let's see what we've got when that is done. And once at last it has dried, you'll have something that looks like this. Now, the trick with marine juice is to hold your nerve when you first apply it, because I'll be totally honest with you, and you've probably seen it, when first it goes on, it looks awful. Those first few seconds, as you apply that first real big blob of it, uh, the temptation is going to be to stop and worry that you've ruined your work, because it's pretty intense. But once it dries, the medium in particular will really help take that edge off, and it just it's brilliant. It works so well. So thanks to the team for sharing that recipe way back in the day, uh, because I still use it for all sorts of things. You could put him on the table very easily like that, base him up, call him done, but we'll take things a little bit further. We are going to do one or two highlights just to make him look a little bit nicer. Now, rather than highlighting, there is one last thing I want to do with that dark tone from earlier. I've got just a couple of dots of it on my palette, and I'm going to put it over the pipes on his helmet. And I'm using this neat rather than as the juice, because I want just a little bit more contrast on these areas. Now let's do some actual highlights. But once again, I'm going back to Wraithbone. What I'm going to do is just a few tiny little edges at the corners of places where I want to accentuate the dry brush. So particularly on the corners of really sharp armor panels, like his arm here, anywhere that you want to emphasize the edges of the armor. 
So I would suggest you don't need to do a huge amount of this because the dry brush is already going to have taken care of most of it. But uh, if you want to tidy him up a little bit, have him look a wee bit nicer, this is a super easy way to do that. And there we go. You don't have to painstakingly highlight every panel, but just by adding a few little extra lines of that, you'll really sharpen up that look. What I've got now is some white scar, and I'm going to get in and paint a few little bits on the icon here. Don't feel as though you have to get into every nook and cranny, we just want to brighten up the larger parts of the white field. So that's nice and quick, just brightens that up a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is highlight the black areas. Now there's two varieties of black. You've got the hard black details like the shoulder pads and the bolter, and then you've got the soft black details which are going to be his undersuit and his webbing. I keep saying webbing, his pouches rather. Now I'm not actually going to bother doing anything to the undersuit, but what I have here is storm vermin fur, and we're going to use a little of this just to catch the edges of the pouches, just before I call them webbing again. So just little bits here and there. I'm using this because storm vermin fur has a tiny wee bit of brown to it, so uh, it's not a pure grey, and it works quite well for quite a sharp leather. And then to paint in those hard mechanical details, what I have is Dawnstone. Now what I would suggest is if you want to cut down on the number of paints you need to pick up for this, then just grab the Dawnstone, and you can use it on both areas of black. Um, it's not going to make a huge difference. I just prefer the uh, Storm Vermin fur on black leather, but really, it's up to you. Once you're done and you're satisfied with that, well, I'm ready to call them finished. But when it comes to your contrast, it really is worth varnishing your miniatures. So what I've got here is Storm Shield. Now this is one of the brush-on varnishes from the pot, and just a big old brush. You don't want to thin this down very much, uh, if at all, and just quickly work it over the entire miniature. Now Storm Shield is not a perfect uh, matte, which I actually kind of like on Space Marines. I think that slight glossiness works really well with the armor. So now we've got a little bit of a shine, and it also smooths out some of the surfaces quite nicely. So a little bit of that chalkiness from the dry brush just disappears completely. Now the tragedy is that a matte actually photographs much better than a, a shiny varnish like this will, so oh dear, <laughs> it's going to be harder to take photos of, but no worries. Once you've got this in front of you, and you've got an army painted up like this, it's going to look the business. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and pop a base on them, and I'll pop the uh, recipe for that one in the description. Let's get a look at what our Imperial Fist looks like once he's all finished. And there at last, our Imperial Fist is complete. Now one thing I forgot to mention was that if you are going to apply any decals or transfers, to put those on before you apply the varnish, because that's going to give them an extra layer of protection and just make sure that they don't flake off over time. It'll also matte them down, or satin them down in this instance, and make them look a little more natural on that surface. But there you have it, Imperial Fist painted pretty simply, and I'd be more than happy to put an army like that on the table. I still think it's Overall, going to be easier to start from a yellow primer, something like Demonic Yellow from the Army Painter. But honestly, if contrast is what you can get your hands on, then I think this is a pretty good way of making the most of Imperial Fist contrast. So, as always, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue including my amazing producers who are showing up on screen now. Thank you very much for your support. You're the folks that keep this ticking. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.